driver the number 99 fast and all ford for roush fenway racing carl what's it like to be here at the world center of racing we're getting ready for the 56th running of the daytona 500 what, what what's it feel like i'm uh i'm sad that it's raining i, I was really excited to uh to come here i'm probably I'm more excited about uh, testing here at daytona than i have been in a long time it's been kind of a cold boring winter for me in missouri so um the idea of coming to florida and driving a race cars sounds really good so you're the one that brought the rain yeah I, <laughs> Don't lay it on me. I, I hope it doesn't rain for two days. I, I don't know what the forecast is tomorrow, but um, we'd definitely like to get on the racetrack. That's great. Uh, if we could have you raise your hand for questions, uh, we'll call on you. We'll food start, choice, sir. We'll start right over here with Dwight. Uh, please state your name and affiliation. Uh, Dwight from Racetake.com. I, I'll ask you the same question I asked Kyle as far as coming. Is there any special time of the – it's a long season for you guys. Mm -hmm. Is there any special time of the year that you like better than others? And uh, is there any time that kind of, like, gives you more energy? Um, uh, and you guys know how it is. The start of, of the season, is there's always a lot of energy. And, uh, you know, the Daytona 500 is, is huge. Uh, that day is probably one of the most energy-filled days in all of motorsports. Um, and then the end of the season gets can get really exciting. Um, but there, I don't know. The whole year, there, there are times where it just depends on how you're running. There are times where it feels like a real grind, and then there are times when um, – you just you literally can't wait to get to the racetrack to go to go race again. So it just I think it depends on how you're running at the time. But some events are, you know, the Indy 500, the Brickyard 400, Kansas for me, uh, Homestead when you're in the chase and you've got a shot at it. All those times I think are the real high points of the season. Okay, we'll go next to Mike and then we'll go back to Bob, the Lee, and then to Ken. Mike Henry, Athlon Sports. Uh, Carl Brian France has talked again talked again this week about possible major changes in uh, in competition and points and uh, trying to make guys run harder for wins, that sort of thing. What do you anticipate happening, and, and what's your reaction? Do you feel like drivers can be tossed incentives to, to make them run harder, try at the front more? That's, a, that's interesting. I've had um, – I actually got a phone call one time from a promoter after a race, and, and he asked me, what could I do? Is there, you know, how much money could I offer to make guys race hard? It was, it was a race that didn't end very um, dramatically. And I, I tried to explain to him that, it, that, I mean, we didn't, all of us race to win. That's the whole point. That's why we started racing. We didn't, um, I raced just as hard in that, my little four-cylinder modified car as I race now. There's no, in, in the, you know, it was, I think it was, uh, Forty dollars to win or something in that in those races. It doesn't matter. The money's not important. It's not about um, you know incentive like that. It's just it, we're trying to win. So whatever um, whatever uh, format they come up with, there will be only two things on each driver's mind. That's to win the race and to win the championship, and um, and that's it. So we we're, we're racing as hard as we can. Um, they can be, and I think they should be. I think they're – and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm off base, and, and this is not the what everyone else thinks. But to me, the championship is a different – it's a different goal. It's a different prize than winning the race. They're, and throughout my career as both a fan and a driver, I've looked at those two things. Um, I've looked at it – you know, you watch a race – and there's the race and what happens in the race and, and uh, who wins and that battle for that trophy. But there, there, there are also the, you know, there's the, there are the championship implications behind that. And then that's an exciting battle in itself. So, um, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know how you make it perfect all the time. I don't know how you, you, um, you I don't know that you can make every, race as important as the final lap of the final race for the championship but I, I i can tell you this every every driver out there you know we don't have to get motivated to go try to win that race if anything you have to sometimes not be too motivated so you don't ruin your championship hopes you know so it's it's a i think it's a battle but everyone's doing the best they can i guess let me put it simply i don't think there's any incentive you can throw out there that's going to make people go put on a better race i, I don't I don't, I'm not certain of that. You know, I, I feel that we do it. We're all racing pretty hard. Go next to Bob, then up to Lee and over to Ken. 
Uh, Bob Hocker, Sporting News. How much testing do you expect to have over the next couple months in the non-plate um, package? And what are your kind of impressions of the rules that they set a few weeks ago? I hope we can have as much testing. I mean, it, literally as much as we can do is what we'll do. Um, I, I've spoke at length with uh, with uh, Gene Stefanishin and um, and the folks during that test. We've had a little bit of, of uh, correspondence afterwards, and I think I think like a, a lot of folks said that the the way that they did that test it was was perfect. I think all of us, including NASCAR, are curious to to um, expand the uh, envelope a little bit and try some different you know parameters farther outside the box. You know whether it's um, you know, much softer tires or much less downforce, things like that. And I think that, that that could be something we see in the future. But the process was really, really impressive, the way that NASCAR tested those things. And I believe of the three things we tested, the, basically three packages, I think that they chose the, the best one, in my opinion. Hey, Spencer Fox Sports. Can you talk a little bit about what Roush Racing did over the offseason to tr try to put you in a better position for 2014, you and Bibble and even Stenhouse? I mean, obviously Stenhouse went through a crew chief change, which should help him get up to speed. But, right. you know, mechanically speaking, you know, what have you guys done? Well, we've got Robbie Reiser working about 25 hours a day, which is, uh, which is good. We just sat and talked for the last hour, hour and a half, about the state of Roush Fenway, what we're working on. And I think that's just that in itself has been huge for Robbie to sit down in a room with, with Greg and Ricky and myself, Doug Yates, Jack Roush. I mean, we've communicated better than we ever have. But I think for us as a company, the simple way of putting it is, is we feel like we have the best people. We feel like we have the best manufacturer support behind us. We feel like we have you know, we believe we have drivers that are, you know, including myself, that are as good as anybody in the garage that we can compete. And uh, we have to put all that together. And we have to have a really strong leader like Robbie Reiser to, to put all of it together and to, to see the results that, that we think we should have. So that's what we've been working on. Without going into details, um, you know, if we can basically be a stronger team and work greater than the sum of our individual parts, I think we're going to be very good. I, I asked uh, Robbie about that last night. We flew down here together. He said the changes to the to the Ford specifically are negligible performance-wise, so it, it shouldn't really make a difference. The the big keys for us are the way we work together as a team. Thank Go you. next to Ben here in the front. Okay, Ben White with Lexington Dispatch, and I'm not Ken, by the way. That's okay. I've been called worse. <laughs> um, as far as Carl, as far as uh, turning points, I've asked other drivers this this morning. Turning points in your career, as far as the one thing that moved you to the level, oh, to the man. biggest next level for you, I mean, where you are, what would you say that was? Who gave you that break that got you noticed? I have multiple uh, spots where I think of as bottlenecks in my career. And the, the goal for me was to just to be able to make a living driving a race car. And, um, and now it's different. I mean, I want to be the champion of the Sprint Cup Series more than anything in the world. Um, but I'd say that the the fact that Kenny Schrader um, gave me an opportunity to come down and see the sport, uh, you know, the, the professional side of NASCAR and, and what it could be, that was that was huge for me when I was 16, 17 years old. Um, that was big. Him and Timmy Cahooth did a lot for me. And and the the single largest opportunity I had was from Mike Mittler. The fact that he ran that NASCAR truck shop right out, out of, uh, you know, his business in Forestdale, Missouri, up the road. I mean, that allowed me to go up there, and basically beg him for three years to let me drive his truck, and uh, and that was huge. And then the opportunities, the, the huge opportunity was when Kyle Busch left uh, Roush Fenway and left that 99 truck seat there, and, uh, and Max Jones and Jeff Smith and Jack decided to give me that opportunity. I felt like all of those, you know, each one of those, moments uh, barely happened and if they wouldn't have happened then uh, I definitely wouldn't have the job I have today so I'm real grateful more than grateful for all that go to Reed next and then over to Claire I read Spencer with NASCAR wire service uh, you've always been as far as I know an advocate of taking downforce off the cars yeah. and it seems like with the new package what they've actually done is added a little bit of downforce on um, yeah. do you are, do you think uh, you know ultimately they may experiment with um, with something that goes in the direction that you'd like to see? I think they will, and that's the, the most exciting thing to me about the whole process. 
I'm not a very patient person. Um, and so it's difficult for me to say, hey, okay, we're going to go ahead and go down this road for a while. But um, the, I think the, the coolest part of that test was the fact that a couple things. Number one, Brian France, Mike Helton, um, you know, Darby, uh, Stephanie, and all those guys, they're open to the fact that, hey, we can change these cars and make them better and make the racing better. That's that's good. And they're real open and honest with us, more than I've ever seen. You know, they, they'll share with us and listen to the, the drivers more, which <laughs> might not be smart, but um, that's good. And then the second thing is we got done with that test, and even though everyone didn't agree on everything, they said, hey, listen, just, just give us a little time. We'll work with Goodyear. We'll come up with another test plan. There's more things we can test down the road. And, I, and, and they're committed. I mean, you can, you can say what you like about NASCAR or, or, or the direction they, directions they go, but they, they are very committed to changing whatever it takes to be the best we can be. And I've, I've learned, I've seen that more lately than ever. And that, that makes me excited. Go to Claire, then back over to Nate. But yeah, but, but, but for the record, I'd be all for chopping the spoilers completely off and <laughs> <laughs> wetting down the track and drive. <laughs> but that's me. They know that about me. <laughs> Claire B. Lang, Sirius XM NASCAR Radio. How much of effect do you get the feel that missing, if we miss a whole day here today, would make other than you're kind of hanging out with not a lot to do? And when do you think you'll get an idea? You said communication is great at Roush Fenway. You guys were not ahead of the game as much last year. Yeah. Uh, how, when will you know or get an idea as to really where you're at? It's, it's tough. We talked a lot of, about that just, just a little while ago. Um, well, first of all, the, the testing, to be honest, I mean, we're not going to miss much here. We have tons of practice before the race. Um, you know, we, we were going to go out and make single car runs for two days and try to find that last little bit of speed. But I'll never forget the nationwide race. I think it was at Talladega when Kyle Busch won with basically the fenders all ripped off the car and the hood buckled and all that. And I remember making a mental note. It's like it's more about where you position yourself at the end than the, the shape of your race car. So we're all just – this is just kind of fun time to get out, and, um, you know, try some different things and prepare for qualifying. Um, on the second front, second part of your question is that we won't know where we stand until basically 10, 15 races into the season. And even then, if you look at last year, we led the points after 26, and we fell on our faces in the chase. So it, it, it's a constantly moving – it's a target that you, you can't ever really catch. Uh, but we will know if we've made improvements, and I think that will be evidenced by Ricky and Greg and I being able to lead laps and win races the, the first part of the season. Uh, Nate Ryan, USA Day Sports. Carl, following up on uh, what you said there about NASCAR executives being more committed than ever to changing whatever it takes, Jimmy Johnson was in here earlier and was saying that um, format changes he thought were going to be kind of the key going forward, not just right. points, but it sounds like other stuff could be a possibility. Are, are you in favor of that, and do you think that's where they're leaning, and do you think there are, are benefits to it? Well, I can't imagine Jimmy being in favor of any changes ever um, right now. <laughs> but, um, no, I mean, they do a good job dealing with any changes. Um, I don't know. I, I, I'm torn on the format. I, I, I can see from a, um, from a very self-centered standpoint, um, I, I think uh, the way our team is right now and the way everything is, I'd rather see the, you know, if, if, if we made any change, it would be to make the chase longer or to, um, you know, put less emphasis on those last 10 races because we're better on the whole throughout the whole season um, right now. Uh, but I, I don't know. I think that there's something to be said about the the history of the sport, keeping things, cl you know, not not moving things too far away uh, from from where we came from uh, as far as determining a champion. And then I also think that we have to be careful not to diminish the um, I, I don't know what the the term is, but not to you you don't want to take away the credibility of a format just just by simply changing it all the time. You know, I mean, how you, you, you know, you wouldn't believe in if a cop tries to pull you over and give you a ticket because the speed limit's different every day in the same road you drive. I mean, eventually it's like, come on, man. So we got to get of the same measure of everyone, I think, somewhat year to year. Now, the, the, I think the idea of putting, giving more points to wins and things like that, I like that idea. I think that's interesting. Um, but I don't want to, you know, you, you don't want to change things all the time just to change, I, I guess. I don't know if I'm really answering your question. I'm glad I don't have to make those decisions. Any more questions for Carl? The gentleman in the back. Yeah, hi. John Gunn, NASCAR Illustrated. 
in terms of the Gen 6 car and the changes, what areas would you not like to see changed going down the road? Well, I, I personally, for me, um, I think the more horsepower we have, the better. I think that the more opportunities that we have for people to uh, fail in that, you know, they they don't put uh, RPM limits on the cars. They don't put camber rules on the cars. When you give people out there the opportunity to try too hard and to to fail, I think it makes a, a more exciting event, and I think it really pays off for the people that have their act together. So you don't want to child-proof the cars so much that um, that they're hard to spin out, that they're um, – you know, that they're hard to wear the tires out, that they're easy to drive. You don't want to make make it so simple that everyone can can uh, run the same speed because I think that kind of, I think it just kind of dulls the competition a little bit. So, you know, that's that's my input. That's what I've, I've told the uh, Gene and the, and the folks there at NASCAR. And I may or may not be right. I don't know if, you know, who would agree with me and who wouldn't, but, um, but that's how I feel about it.